Welcome to Mission City Church. Thank you so much for joining us online today. My name is Russell and I'm the lead pastor here. Uh, we are a community that makes Jesus known. We hope today that you uh, know Jesus, follow Jesus, and tell others about him as well. Uh, on the screen right now, there's a connect card. Uh, you can pull out your camera on your phone and hover over the QR code on it. That'll take you to our website. It'll open up a link on your phone. On our website, uh, on our menu is a connect card. That's a way for you to reach out to us. Uh, let us know that you were here. Any prayer requests, uh, any questions you have, if you're interested in serving, that's a great place for you. You can also give uh, on our website at missioncitykc.com slash give uh, if you'd like to uh, tithe or support us financially as well. Uh, so this is our last week of our series uh, in the book of James. I'm super excited about what God wants to do. Uh, and now uh, we're going to start our service with just a few songs as we sing to, uh, to our King Jesus. So let our praise be your welcome. Let our songs be a sign. Because we are here for you. Because we are here
welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, we welcome in this place. Your love is to food it like a ring of solid gold. Well, like I said uh, in our intro, today is our last day in James, and I think it's been a great book uh, for us. I think it's a challenging book, and James, again, he just doesn't pull his punches. He has these one-liners where he just kind of comes right at us. Uh, and so I hope today that uh, as we wrap this book up that you would continue to be encouraged, that you would continue to be challenged uh, by his words, uh, and they would encourage us to follow Jesus. You know, it makes me think of uh, any time I get to the end of a book, uh, in, uh, in, in, just in, in the Bible specifically, is, is kind of taking note of what, like, what are the last things that they're leaving us with. Specifically in the letters, there's usually some final instruction 
Um, and, uh, and, I, and I think it's good. It, it's, it encourages us maybe to, to, to remember what he said in the past. Like James isn't necessarily going to bring up any super new ideas to us, uh, but, but he's also going to kind of narrow in and kind of finish uh, what he has to say to the churches and also that we can learn from that as well. Uh, and so today we're going to be in James chapter 5. We're going to start in verse 7. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm excited because he, he kind of has two. The, the first part that we're going to talk about today is, is somewhat connected to um, the, the section that we last talked about. But it's also in some ways wrapping up or, or, or him easing into his final thing. And so there's really two big ideas that come out of uh, the last two sections in James. First is this being patient and steadfast for the Lord's return. Uh, that there is a, a call and desire for believers to, like, to, to patiently wait that, uh, for Jesus to come back. And, um, and just to comment a little bit about that, there is, there is something to say that, that in, 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 our, in our view or in our teaching of Christianity, we, we greatly emphasize the cross, which we should. That's, that's where Jesus uh, laid down his life. He, he took our place. We, we emphasize the resurrection, which is this idea of new creation, of new life that we find in Jesus. Uh, we also, um, uh, and, and then finally, uh, there's a third piece that we don't always emphasize, which is uh, he, Jesus is going to come back. And some communities do that really well. Uh, I've been a part of communities that we talk about it, but it doesn't come up as much as those other two. And, and really, uh, the return of Jesus or the return of our King is, is to give us hope uh, and is to give us encouragement. And the reason this section connects back to the previous section is because it was about landowners who, and we just talked about this last week, who were oppressing the people. And they, they were talking about, James talks about how judgment is going to happen to these people. But like, but what if it doesn't happen on this side of Jesus' return? Like, what do we do when it looks like the world is broken around us and, and, and it isn't fixed? Like, what, what do we do? And, and so there's this call to be patient and to be steadfast, to be solid in the foundation of who Jesus is. And then James gives us some examples. So let's look at the text and see what it says. So right now it says in verse 7, it says, Be patient, therefore, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it until it receives the earthly and late rains. And so James gives us this illustration. And again, he, they're talking, he's talking about landowners uh, robbing people of their work. Like if you're a farmer, if you're in an agrarian society, uh, you're waiting for rains and you're waiting for the harvest. And you have to have this ability to be patient, to be patient to what... Uh, to, to, to the outcome, to be patient for those times as well. And in the same way, we should be patient for the, the Lord's return. He continues, he said, be steadfast. He says, you also be patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Now, again, I, I think I said this last week, but most generations, they, they, they think that, um, that their generation is going to be the one where Jesus comes back. And they look at the chaos of the world, they feel the oppression, and they're leaning into that hope, and they're hoping and praying that Jesus returns today. And I think that's a good hope. Like I think that we should have a desire to be with Jesus. And though like some of us are in really great seasons and we love this life, like being with him is, is, is everything. Like he's the best. He's the, he's awesome. He's greater than anything and everything. And so to, to live life with our creator, like in completeness and wholeness will be just amazing. And we can't miss, like we can't, we, we can't miss on that. And so I think there is this natural desire, if you will, uh, for us to, us to think like it's now, like it's going to happen. And, and I would just say this is like, we need to live like he could come back today, like there needs to be a sense of urgency and and to continue to fulfill the mission and the calling that Jesus has for us. Uh, but we don't. But 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 I don't think we get just stuck and just like looking at the sky. You know, I'm, I'm reminded when Jesus does ascend into heaven and the angels they come down and they say, Hey, what are you doing? Like, why are you still looking up there? Like, go. Like, you've been called. You have a purpose. Like, God wants to use you. Uh, and so, in your patience, in your steadfastness. Uh, waiting for the Lord's return, uh, the encouragement to you is, is like, get to work. Like, do the things that God has called you to do. Serve in the communities and the spheres that God has placed you in. Use your influence so that His kingdom would come on earth as it is in heaven uh, around you. 
and be used by God in, in, in mighty ways. And then he encourages them in verse 9. He says, don't grumble, do not grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. And so there could have been some critical grumbling um, amongst one another, uh, amongst the different believers. Uh, it also could have been, again, about these oppressive uh, landowner as well. Um, and he's basically saying, like, when you grumble against one another, or if you're overly critical of, of, of someone else, um, you, you potentially are flirting with the line of doing something wrong. And, uh, and, and we, all, we, we all probably know that line. Like there's, there's spaces that you need to vent. There's spaces that you need to process. Some of us are more internal. Some of us are more external. And there's, you should have healthy spaces for that. But then there's, there's, that, there's times where it just gets too far, where it becomes either gossiping or, um, it, or you, you've, you've taken it to uh, the next level as well. I also think um, sometimes when we think about Jesus' return, we think about, the judgment that's going to happen to those who have oppressed us or hurt us or the evil, which I do believe there is going to be a judgment for sure. Uh, and I do think that that should give us hope that like the rights will be, or the wrongs will be made right. Uh, but I also think it's a, it's a time to examine uh, ourselves to say, all right, Lord, where have I wronged? Am I, am I actually contributing to the chaos of this world? Am I actually contributing to, 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 to ruining your good world and your good creation, and hurting others around me and owning it and asking for forgiveness uh, and for grace uh, as well? And so it's not just an opportunity to look forward. Like, so when he says the judge is standing at the door, uh, I, think, I think this is a time for us to, to look inward and to examine our own lives. There's a there's a spiritual practice called the prayer of examine. You can Google it. There's some templates and we, we can even post one uh, if you're interested or send a, uh, a message on Facebook or, or YouTube and we'll, we'll send this to you. But, but it's basically just a way to process your day where you examine your day and you see if you have missed the mark in any way. And then on the other side of it, you, you know, you ask for forgiveness and, you, and it, it leaves a sense of gr- gratitude and then also just repentance and grace. It is just a part of our cycle as human beings. And so just taking moments to examine ourselves, it's, it's huge as well. So he continues, he says, as an example of suffering and patience, so he wants to give you a couple of pictures. He says, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Behold, we consider those blessed who remain steadfast. You've heard of the steadfastness of Job. So now you think about the prophets who were... Were, were commanding these messages or giving these messages of God, but they, they sometimes were some of the few people of Israel who stayed loyal, who stayed steadfast to who God was. And this is an encouragement to you in, in, in hard seasons, like continue to lean in to Jesus. Like he is enough. He's great. Uh, and he says, you've heard of the steadfastness of Job and you have seen the purposes of God, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. And I love this because people like give Job like a really honoring thing because he never like recanted his faith, if you will. But Job went through the ringer, you know what I'm saying? Like lost all of his money, lost his family, lost his wife, had his friends just talking smack to him. And, and, and he, I mean, even if you read Job, like it's not, it's not like he, it's not like, it's like, all right, everything's gonna be fine. Just like, just suck it up and like put a smile on your face type of thing. Like Job really wrestled with how hard these things were. He really demanded it, an audience in justice with God. And I think he is a good picture for how you and I, in some ways, how our prayer life should look and how we, how we struggle and how we're honest and how we're, we're, we don't hide our emotions or our feelings. Like we don't have to be fake about it. Like we can really be sorrowful. We can really be hurt. We can really ask God for answers and God meets us there. And then at the end, you know, the story of Job, if you don't know it, like God kind of puts it all back together. And that's kind of our story. It's like there's brokenness around you. We can demand God to come and to act and to move. And when he does, we praise him. And when he doesn't, we still stay steadfast. We stay patient. And then we still look to the horizon and say, hey, Lord, you're coming and I believe it. I'm going to lean into it. And I'm, I'm going to lean. I'm going to trust in you. And even if I'm angry or mad, I know that one day you're going to make this all right again. And so are you, are you, are you looking to, to Jesus to come and make uh, the world right in your life? And are you being patient and steadfast and leaning into him along the way? So that's, that's James's first 
um, his first kind of teaching for us uh, as he's about to close his book. Then, then, then he really gets what I would call like he, he's kind of in the wrap it up section uh, as well. And so he, he, he gives his final instruction. Uh, and, and the reason that we see this is because he says he transitions with this phrase, but above all. And this, this transitional phrase is he's basically saying, hey, but above all, hey, I want you to think about these things. And, and in fact, they all actually deal with our words and how we speak and, and what we say and how we talk to uh, one another and how we pray. And so there's, there's a section on frivolous vows. There's a section on uh, prayer, just over physical and spiritual needs. Like this should be about, uh, a part of our lives. And then there's, 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 this, there's language about like calling out to people and teaching people who are far from God and calling them back as well. And so I, I think this is a great challenge to us. And, and James really does talk about words a lot. Like he, he, he talks about our tongue being this powerful thing that leads us and guides us. And it's just this reminder to, 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 to take hold of it, to not let it own you as well. So he says in verse 12, he says, But above all, my brothers, do not swear either by heaven or by earth uh, or by other oath, but let your yes be yes and your no be no, so that you may, f- n- n- may excuse me, so that you may not fall under condemnation. And so he's really quoting Jesus here. Like he does, he, he's really quoting Jesus here. Jesus says, hey, let your yes be your yes and your no be your no. In Matthew 5, 34 through 37, the Sermon on the Mount. And, and, you know, people take this to, to a really extreme place, which if that's your conviction, I get it. But so the Anabaptists is a denomination and they take it to where like they don't take any oaths at all. And so um, if you look into their tradition, if I'm, I might be wrong, but I think like they won't join the military because of um, potentially because of the oath that you have to take. Uh, even even some like like the way that people do marriage covenants in the United States, uh, they have some they have some tendencies there as well. And so, uh, is this what he's really going with? Is say, hey, don't take any oaths at all. I don't, I don't know if that's what he is. I think he's really trying to say a couple of things. One is back in the day, people would would swear by God. They would say, hey, God's going to do this, 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 and this. And I swear, you know, we we would say in our language, swear to God that this will happen. And, and, and he's basically saying, hey, like, be really careful with that. Like, don't swear by heaven or by earth or, 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 or anything else. Like, don't do that. But instead, like, just be honest with your words. Like, let your yes be your yes. If you say you're going to do something, do it. If you say you're not, then don't. And, like, here's the thing is, it doesn't say always say yes. It doesn't say always say no. So I think sometimes we miss this where, where like we think that any opportunity, anything we have to do is we have to say yes to it because it's good or it's bad. No, no, no. Like we go back to last week. If the Lord wills it, if God has a plan for you, then yeah, sure do it. Like lean into what he wants to do and say, yeah, I'll do that. But also like some of us really need to learn the word no. Like some of you really need to learn the word no. Like you're saying yes to everything and, you're, and you feel responsible to do it. So you're doing it. And, and, and you, you have permission to say no. Uh, you, should, you should lean in and ask the Lord like how you should set your time. It's limited here. It's finite. And then others of us, we say yes and we don't follow through. It's, um, it's the typical, uh, what I used to do in college, where I, if someone would say, hey, what, what are you doing Friday night? And they'd tell me what they're doing. They're like, hey, you going to come? I'd say, I don't know, maybe. Uh, it's a great maybe on the invite, right? Like I'm just waiting to see if something better comes along. Like maybe you should say yes to certain things, and if you did say yes to it, you should follow through on it. But it's just a really simple thing. It's just like our words matter. Our words contribute to our character and and who we are as individuals. And so let's be honest. Like let's if we agree to doing something, let's do it. Do it. If we say no, then don't do it, and don't worry about it as well. And then he transitions to the second thing, which is prayer. The prayers of God's people are so powerful. The prayers of God's people are so powerful. Listen to this. This is amazing. We, t- we talked about this a couple weeks ago, but this is so powerful. Listen to this. Is anyone among you suffering? Let them pray. If you're suffering right now, pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let them sing praises. If you are just full of joy, you woke up today and life is good, then sing praises to God. Lift up your voice to Him. Is anyone among you sick? Call for the elders of the church and let them pray over Him, anointing Him with oil in the name of the Lord Jesus. And the prayers of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. And so 
like in, in all times, as First Thessalonians say, like pray continually or pray always. Like there should be this, like in all circumstances we can pray. Like we want to be a church that prays. We want to be a church that leans into this stuff. Like we want to pray over the good times and, and the suffering times. We want to pray. And, and, and if people are sick, we want to pray over them that God would heal them. If you're, if you're living in sin, like we want you to confess through prayer to the Lord of your mistakes and where you, you shortcomings. It's, it's a part of, of your regular, regular practice. And he gives this example of Elijah, the prophet, who he says was a man uh, with nature like uh, with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain for three years and six months, and it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruits. His prayers are so fa- powerful that God used this man to pray, and he stopped the weather, which is crazy. If you're suffering, pray. If you're cheerful, sing praises. If you're sick, like call people to pray for you. They use oil as a way just to, it's a, it's a symbol of the Holy Spirit, but it's also just a way, like if you put oil on you, it kind of stays with you for a little bit of time. And, it, it, and even as you leave someone praying you with oil, like that scent, sensation, that smell, that fragrance, Will, will come uh, and remind you of, of, of that prayer and also the faithfulness of God as well. Con- commit sin. If you committed a sin, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another. Like this is a part of, this is a part of what being a part of a community is about. And the last one is we want to pursue others. Like we want to pursue others who are lost. And it says this in verse 19, it says, My brothers, if any... Anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that the, whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. And so he said, hey, if there's, there's, if there's someone among you that's wandering, it could be someone that's a part of your body. It could be someone who's seeking and looking, I think, uh, is looking for truth. Like, there is a call to go after lost sheep or wandering sheep. Like lost sheep hunting should be a thing. You know, it reminds me of the story of the 99 where the shepherd left the 99 to go pursue the one who was lost and they were super happy that they found him. Like we should do, we should, we should go lost sheep hunting. Like we should go after people who have lost the truth. We should go after people and, and love and, and show grace and mercy and kindness and, and compassion to these people. And, and, and not yielding, but just to, to, to continue to share truth with them. Is there there's someone that you've given up hope on that has, has gone astray that you said, hey, good luck, see you later, nice knowing you. Uh, too bad for you, or is there someone that like God is putting in your heart right now who you know is wandering and that you can be the one to say, hey, come back home. Hey, come this way. Hey, this is the way I know it. I've walked that way before. Because maybe some day, way down the road, you're going to need that too. And so let's be people who are on the lookout for, for people who are lost. Let's go find them. Let's go bring them back. Let's go, let's go do that. Let's be a part of people who cares for the wanderers and hopefully that they can come back and be found as well. Offering more grace upon grace upon grace because that's what God does to us as well. Like, let's be lost sheep hunters. It's going to be a new uh, reality TV show, Lost Sheep Hunting. It's going to be on, I don't know, whatever Christian app TV is there. There's probably not even one. But let's go do it. Let's be about it. Because, because what does it say? He says, whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. There's grace upon grace upon grace for that person as well. And so as we wrap up today, I just want to wrap up with, uh, back, I want to kind of circle back to that that James uh, 5, 13 through 16, where it talks about the prayers. And so if this is you, um, if this is you, I want you to pray over the section that you are. Uh, I'm going to do a little prayer for each of these. It says, so if, is anyone among you suffering? Let them pray. So Lord Jesus, I pray for those who are suffering right now. I pray that you would uh, comfort them in their suffering, God, that they would be steadfast and patient for your return. I pray that you would move right now uh, in their circumstance, that you would heal them, you would, you would comfort them, you would be there for them. Let him pray as anyone cheerful. Let him sing praises. And so, God, for those who are cheerful, we praise you for being good. We praise you for the joy and the fullness and the goodness that comes from being in your presence. And, God, we praise you for this life. We praise you for the breath. We praise you for uh, this season, for those who are, are joyful as well. Is anyone among you sick? 
I can't anoint you with oil, but Lord, I pray for those who are sick. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that you would heal those who are listening to this and those who are in our community, God, who are sick. God, that you would miraculously do a work, that heaven would meet earth. There would be no sickness uh, in these people who are are asking for resolution and and asking for for healing in their lives. And God, uh, we pray right now, uh, those that for those that, that, that need to confess sin, God, that you would... You, you, you are faithful and just to forgive us of our unrighteousness. And so, God, I pray that we would boldly come and confess and repent and change our minds from the things that we have done that are not of you. And, uh, and God, we would own it and that we would be changed. And you would change us and transform us by the power of your Holy Spirit. So, God, would you move as we continue to worship in the service? We love you and praise you. We ask all these things in Jesus Christ name. Amen. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thy all and all. Jesus, be all. All to him I am. And sin that left to curse and the stain be washed in the whiteness.
the stain He washed it white as snow. Well, thank you so much for joining us online today. If you do need prayer, if you want uh, our team to come and anoint you with oil, reach out to us. If we're local, we'd love to do that. Or we can connect you uh, with uh, some elders in your area as well. Uh, we, I hope that this book has challenged you. I hope that we continue to be patient and steadfast because Jesus is going to come back and he is the hope and he will make this world right. You have a fantastic week. God bless you and we'll see you next time.